The lights on the modern car are comparatively large. The Morris Miners are much smaller and they may escape the notice of some other drivers. We can't fit larger lights without spoiling the look of the car, but we can compensate by making them a lot brighter. The best way to do this is to swap the standard bulbs for LEDs. No need to change the wiring because they draw very little current. Here's a comparison of LED bulbs on one side versus standard bulbs on the other. Seems easy, and it is, but there are a few pitfalls to avoid. Pitfall 1. Colour. The original indicator bulbs are white. You may expect to replace these with white LEDs, but strangely, this won't work. Here's why. The original bulbs put out white light, which is made up of a range of colours. The orange glass doesn't add colour, it removes everything but the orange. White LEDs, on the other hand, don't put out the colours in the same proportions. Filter out everything but the orange and not much is left. The lighting will actually be worse. What we need is a special orange LED that puts out lots of orange light. The same applies to the brake lights. The originals were white, but we have to replace them with special red LEDs. Pitfall 2. Purchasing. Well, obviously you want to buy LEDs that will fit. There's a link in the video description to a type chart. And when buying LEDs, remember that unless they say otherwise, they're probably polarity sensitive. So negative earth and positive earth cars need different types. You may also come across LEDs described as CAN bus compliant. They're designed to work with modern car computers and you don't need CAN bus compliance. Finally, always buy from a reputable manufacturer. There are lots of cheap LEDs on eBay and most of them are rubbish. Now to fit our lights. First, disconnect the battery, of course. The later front light units are on a bayonet fitting. Push them in firmly and twist in an anti-clockwise direction. They should come out quite easily. The back lights and the traveller are held in by a chrome ring under a rubber retaining lip. It's easy to tear, so best to lubricate it first. It's also best done on a warm day, as the rubber can be very brittle when it's cold. Gently ease the lip back with a small screwdriver and remove the ring. Then repeat with the glass cover. Saloon rear lights are held in with a couple of screws and are quite easy to remove. The glass domes are pretty easy to put back. But the chrome rings can be a bit of a pain. Here's a trick. Cut a band out of a thin plastic bottle. The narrow end should be the same size as the chrome ring. Cut it like this. You'll also need a glass, a jar or a piece of pipe that's the same size as the ring. Grease everything and fit the plastic band, narrow end first, to the outer groove of the rubber circle. Now insert the chrome ring and push it in with the glass. It should pop straight in. The brake and tail lights are done the same way. They have two contacts and it looks as if they could be put in the wrong way around. Actually they can't as the pins are at different heights. Since the colour of the lights now comes from the LEDs, we don't need to use the coloured glass covers if we don't want to. You can use white ones instead if you like, and these are available. But I've kept the coloured ones as I like an original look. The number plate lights are pretty easy. Just remember you'll need four bulbs and don't drop the glass part. The interior light is held in place with two screws. The bulb is reversible so you don't need to worry about the negative and positive earth. If it doesn't come on, just reverse the LED. 
And remember, it only has light elements on one side, so these need to face the right way. The LED bulbs generate very little heat, so I'm going to put three in here soldered together. Now we can reconnect the battery and test everything. Oh dear, the indicators don't seem to be flashing. What can be wrong? Bit 43, the flasher unit. What's wrong? It's the flasher unit, of course. It's mechanical and relies on the indicators drawing current to heat up a bimetallic strip. The LEDs don't draw enough current to make it work. Here's an electronic replacement that looks exactly like the original flasher, but doesn't care about current. It's a straight swap. The indicators are all working fine now, but the electronic flasher doesn't click, so we risk leaving them on if the self-cancelling fails. Pitfall 4. No click. We can get around this with a cheap eBay 12 volt buzzer. We want it to beep for both sides, so we are connected to the light green wire on the flasher unit. That's the one that feeds the light on the end of the indicator stalk. As the wires are so thin, we'll solder them to the terminals instead of crimping. We'll use a piggyback spade terminal for the positive wire and earth the black one to the flash unit mounting bolt. We can hide the buzzer by tucking it in securely between the terminals. We could fit the buzzer inside the car, but it would probably be too loud there. And that's the end of part one. In part two, we'll be looking at converting the headlights. Thanks for watching and see you next time.